Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. I like to nerd out to the science behind how we can keep our houseplants happy and to multiply them in our homes. So if you're into that kind of content, please do subscribe to my channel and send me likes. In today's topic, I'm going to talk about the ethical dominance. Before some of you feel threatened by the word and decide to shy away from the video, it's actually a very simple term. I'm gonna make it very, very simple for you guys. I actually don't know the really crazy science behind it. There are like tons of like scientific names, biological factors. I'm just gonna go super simple for you because this um, affects your plant care. And how this affects your plant care is that you can control the growth pattern of your plant, such as this uh, fiddle leaf fig in my hand. And this is actually the uh, small form. So apparently the fiddle leaf fig comes in a small form and a, and a big leaf form, which can get huge. Uh, so it affects the growth pattern of your fiddle leaf figs, but at the same time, it uh, allows you to uh, carefully prune your plants and propagate them uh, calculatively or uh, in, a, in a strategic manner, rather. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna take you to a tour around the, uh, the garden and just to show you uh, the plants while I talk about what apical the dominance mean. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna talk about is this fiddle leaf fig. So most plants actually have apical dominance. This means that it has a lateral growth pattern and shoots upward. And on the tip here, actually, you'll see this tiny little bud here. Uh, if you have like uh, your rubber tree and all that, they also have this uh, what we call an apical bud. So all the new leaf will come from this bud. So what happens is that there's actually a hormone called auxin um, that's in the, in the apical bud that is shut down through the stems of the plant that prevents the lower stems to branch out. Um, why they do that is because in nature, all the plants are actually growing upwards and they're trying to fight for light. So they're clamoring over each other and the best one obviously wins. So they're always going to uh, prioritize the growth on the, on the top uh, portion of the plant. However, if we release the apical dominance, uh, for example, if this is uh, in, what do you call it, uh, in compromise, like the top is cut off or it broke off or for whatever reason, uh, the, uh, it will encourage the lower part to branch out. And, when, and then when the lower uh, part of the stem branch out, they will also clamor over each other and whoever gets to the top first will win. So this is sort of a survival strategy for the plant. So what happens here is, if, I, if I'm happy, for example, with this fiddle leaf fig, if I'm happy with the height that it, it's in now, I can actually just, uh, I'm not gonna do it, but I can just pluck this off. And then what happens is that this plant will completely stop growing in height uh, from here and it will instead uh, branch out somewhere uh, lower down the stem. Usually it's going to uh, branch out right uh, at the node right below where you uh, severe it. Or uh, alternately, I could also cut this, let's say right here, and I can propagate the top. So the top cutting will be its own plant. And now that this bottom plant has no apical dominance, you've released it of its apical dominance, it will branch out. So it will give you uh, multiple branches below. And I can show you, you can actually kind of control where you want the, the growth to be. So I'll, I'll take you to a different plant. So here is my rubber tree. And uh, this is the top portion and this is the ap apical bud. And I love staring at plants right here at the sharp point. Philodendrons, a lot of them have them too. If you look carefully, nearly all your plants actually have this apical bud where the growth point is coming from. But I wanted to, uh, to talk to you about this plant because this used to be just one, uh, one main stem of um, rubber tree. And what happened was that uh, at that time I looked up apical dominance, I figured out uh, how you can actually manipulate the growth. Uh, so there's a hack. I, I can't find where I ex did it exactly, but somewhere along, if you look at this, these are actually notes. This is one notes, two notes. So along this, actually, you can cut uh, the plant, not all the way <laughs> off. You can just uh, cut it so that the sap actually comes out, you injure it. So this is where um, you can encourage anywhere below that cut to branch out. And this is exactly what happened. I remember I did exactly two cuts. And here we have uh, one uh, new branch, as you can see, it's attached, and then a second one. So these are these are two uh, branches of the the, tr the tree that I that has emerged after I made that cut. It took about three to four months before these uh, 
buds emerge. So what happened is that they came out as like little sharp um, apical buds uh, from the stem and then it just developed its own branch, it just shot out. So this is one way that you can actually encourage branching is just to trick the, the tree into thinking, oh, you know, there's no more apical dominance, so you can go ahead and push out shoots uh, down below. So you can just go ahead and injure it, just give it a cut. I would say, um, I, don't, I don't know, maybe like five millimeter in cut uh, around there, basically until the sap comes out. So yeah. However, if you're happy with just one long branch of um, uh, rubber tree, you can leave it alone and it will usually not branch out. There are some random circumstances in which the plant will actually uh, branch out, but generally speaking, they won't. And again, if I just go, I just pluck this right off, it will inhibit the growth. It will not grow taller, rather it will grow bushier. So if you want a bushy plant, go ahead and prune your plants. So here we have a philodendron micans and it's given me one long vine. Uh, and that's what they do, they give out long vines. And what happens is that they will always uh, continue with one vine until you severe the top. So if I prune this right now, um, at the nodes below, a few branches may occur. So this is why people say, oh, you should prune your plants if you want to encourage branching. Because if I just left it alone, it's just going to be one plant with just one vine that's coming off it. So definitely, that's one way that you can get your plant to bush out is by removing it off its apical dominance. And with your philodendron and pothos, it's so nice when you just prune them off and then you can propagate so many of these plants. That's why I have maybe about uh, 20 pots of these philodendron micans. Um, I had one pot originally, but now I have so many. And that's because I kept pr uh, pruning them and propagating it. And this is one of the propagates actually. All right, so I wanna take your eyes to this plant. It's probably in the Dracaena family, but I'm not sure. Um, so what happened is that I actually made a cut here and uh, the cutting is actually now living in its own pot. It took like five to six months to uh, root and then finally I put it in, so oh, this is actually pretty dry, I need to water this. Um, so yeah, it's doing really well in, in this soil, I put it next to its mama so they can be together. <laughs> but back to this story, uh, oh, there's a spider, it's like trying to hide away from me. Spiders in your plants are amazing, by the way, they're gonna eat your past, oh, there he is, see? Uh, so after I made the cut over here, the, the, the two uh, uh, previous branches, actually, uh, the two previous the nodes actually sent out branches, as you can see here. This is one branch, two branch. So imagine if I cut it a little bit lower down below, I can actually encourage this to become a really bushy plant. So if that's the shape that I want, I would definitely uh, keep pruning it. But unfortunately, I'm actually happy with the, the shape the, as the way it is now, so I'm gonna leave it alone. But this is a very good experiment. And here's the Skindapsis trubii, moonlight or moonshine, and it's such a slow grower. I've had it for a long time, and it's put out a lot of uh, vines. So what happened is that I should actually cut it right, uh, right here, just snip it off, and then propagate all these vines, and then this plant will actually bush out a bit more than now. Because imagine if I just have a pot like this, it's just not very sexy looking. So yeah, this is the one way for you to get your pothos to uh, bush out a bit more and get free cutting along the way. So this is a rubber tree, uh, Black Knight. How beautiful, I really like watching them when they're unfurling with their new leaf and that one's also um, unfurling. So after this leaf uh, opens up, a new apical bud will appear at the sharp point and then the new leaf will come from there. This is a pretty amazing process that it has. Um, again, <laughs> I keep saying this, if I wanna <laughs> If I want this, this, these are actually three separate plants, but if I want one of them to branch out, I'll simply just cut it off, I can propagate the top, and then the bottom will, will branch out. Or I can, uh, again, I can just uh, injure it a little bit and allow uh, the, the, the plant to branch out from below. And of course, we're going to talk about herbs, whether you're talking about you know, your lavender or your... <laughs> This is a very sad basil. I have all my basil cuttings elsewhere. So basically, I, if you can see here, I cut the, I did a lot of uh, basil cuttings because they were getting so long and tall and leggy. Uh, and then they were also flowering. So I just cut it off. I rem remember with herbs or even some plants, you, you don't want to cut it where the stem has turned woody. So this is where it turned, uh, the stem is getting old and woody. And this is the younger shoot. You want to cut where the younger shoot is because that's where 
um, the it will branch out. If you cut at the wooden section because it's so old, it's highly unlikely for it to branch out. So as you can see here, after I made the cut, this probably about two weeks ago, uh, these uh, two branches formed. So they are gonna continue to grow uh, upwards. So if I wanna have a very bushy uh, basil plant, I'm just gonna have to keep pruning it. Unfortunately, I think I pruned this a little bit late. I was neglecting it. If I, if I had the choice, I would have pruned it like way down below and have a bushy plant from the start. And the same thing goes with this uh, rosemary plant. So, uh, oh, this looks very, this looks very uh, root bound. I can see the roots coming off from the surface and also it's drying up. So maybe I, I do need to repot him. I do water him very often. So yeah, I guess it needs uh, more soil and more moisture retention. <laughs> but I digress. So all the uh, the light green parts are actually new growth. So I've actually pruned off a little, I, I don't even know where I can find it, but I've pruned some of these off and I, um, I actually make really good steak with them. So they would branch out exactly where I would cut it. That's why I have like a pretty, pretty bushy plant now. It's, of course it's gonna get bushier if I kept pruning it. But yeah, so you get the point. Aha, so I found a very sexy example. <laughs> Uh, so this is the Monstera Edinsonii uh, variegata that I uh, propagated a few videos ago, I can't remember. And uh, but a lot of you guys are telling me that it's mosaic virus, but it's definitely not. It's doing really well. Uh, so yeah, it's actually uh, put out, this, this is a new vine that's, put, that's grown from uh, where I cut it. But if you look closely here, there's another vine that's growing from the node below. So if you want a, a bushy plant, definitely prune it. And that's also one thing that I encourage you, if you have like rare plants or whatever, um, and you want to multiply, then definitely give them a prune because the mama plant, the parent plant, may uh, bush out, giving you more leaves. Oh my God, so I almost forgot to talk about Dracaena. Uh, Dracaenas are the best examples when you talk about apical dominance. So what happened is that uh, there was another uh, huge, uh, uh, what do you call this, a growth point like this that actually broke off right here like a, a, like a tornado came by. I don't know, it's not a tornado, strong winds came by and it broke off that stem so we, we sort of cut it right here very cleanly. Um, and then what happens is that uh, right below where you cut it at the node, a lot of new growths have emerged. So imagine this is going to be super bushy. It's going to have three uh, new growth points. It's going to be so wild. In case you were wondering what happened to that uh, Dracaena top that fell off, uh, this is it. Uh, he's been living here for about six months. He was actually propagated uh, directly into soil. And as you can see, the roots are dancing around, trying to get out of the pot. So it's doing super well. New growths are emerging. So yeah, again, Dracaenas are super easy. Uh, I actually recommend for Dracaena to just stick them into soil uh, if you're comfortable with that concept. Otherwise, you can also stick them in water, wait for it to root, and then put it into water. Uh, when it comes to plant rescue, sometimes yeah, you have plants that are just dying off and whether you repot it or whatever, uh, you know that the, 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 growing, the growing point, the top point is doing badly. And the plant is actually using a lot of energy to transfer uh, uh, water and nutrients up uh, into the, the top point. So what happens here is that you can actually just, uh, as you can see here, there are new growths trying to emerge from the bottom, which means that the top it's pretty bad, let me see. I don't see the apical bud anymore. Maybe it's come off or whatever. So the best thing that you can do for the plant is to cut it right off because that's going to drain energy from the plant. There's no more apical bud and it will encourage growth from these two uh, nodes that are actually uh, sleeping. Oh, and another thing that may encourage uh, branching out is uh, if the plant, for example, was injured somewhere on the top, or as in the case of this cocoloba plant, it was actually infested really badly by mealybugs. So I'm actually, uh, I, I think that, ooh, I think I see a little bit more, uh, I said mealybug. Yeah, I have to treat him again. So um, when the plant is, that's my brother, by the way, he to he's totally asking for it. He's asking for it. <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah, because the plant was injured somewhere on the top or maybe it got cut or, or any kind of damage, it may signal the plant to start branching out below, which is what this plant is doing, as you can see here. Uh, it's branching out like crazy. Uh, so yeah, so sometimes that happens with plants too if they're not in the best conditions because they, they, it's telling, it's ap uh, it, the apicotus is saying like, 
Okay guys, abort mission, abort, abort. Like I'm not doing, I'm not gonna survive. You guys better buckle up and start branching out below because we need to win this, this race. <laughs> and here's the philodendron birkin. Uh, this is the parent plant actually. I made the incision uh, right here. I took a lot of leaves off. So I just kept the base and that's one of the tops of the leaves. So they come up with these beautiful patterns as they mature. However, uh, as I cut this plant off, it sent me multiple uh, uh, branches. So this is one, and then there's two right here, and there's another one down below, see, three. So as I release it of its apical dominance, the bottom nodes became active and they sent out multiple branches. So as you can see, these are actually still very young, but as uh, more leaves appear and they get bigger, it will give me these uh, beautiful markings. So yeah, if you want your philodendrons to get uh, really bushy, uh, go ahead and cut it off. Cut off the top and propagate it. You're gonna get multiple branches. Okay, so I hope that wasn't too threatening for you guys to understand. It is a very simple concept, but it's very important for us to know, for us to become better plant parents. Uh, if you enjoy contents like this, please do subscribe to my channel, send me likes and comment down below. I'm at Botanist on Instagram. Feel free to DM me if you have any questions on plant care and propagations. Meanwhile, I'll take care and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye!